West West is propaganda. You are watching Pin Game 101 on Rap Azilla. Uh, yeah. Check the pin game, check the pin game. Got your favorite rappers going insane. Then we run the gauntlet like the end game. So what you waiting for? Check the pin game. All right, everybody. We are the Pen Game 101 crew. We are here to interview Propaganda for his new project, Terraform the People. And of course, I got the same crew of Cutright, Eli, and Luke. But we are going to lose Eli, and we're going to do some movie magic to make it look like he's here. And then at other points, it's going to look like, hey, he's not really there. How did they do that? So <laughs> that's basically what we're doing today. Eli, explain real quick what's happening, and then uh, it's off to interview propaganda. Uh, well, you know, I'm getting my microchip injected today, everyone. In case the government wants to track me, they are going to have full access to where I'm at at all times. Not that I own an iPhone or anything, so they were doing that anyway. But if you want to judge me in the comments, please make sure to leave a prayer and a like on the video. Hey, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, wait. So you, you had to get the RDIF mark of the beast? <laughs> Uh, I think that's my cue. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Oh, it's near to that, bro. It didn't begin, bro. Hey, I guess I see you. I ain't gonna see you on the other side. So I'll be out, bro. I, I, next next episode, we'll see. You know, we'll see what he looks like. We'll see if he's glowing or if if anything's different, and then we'll know right away. Like, thanks for doing this for the Rabzilla audience, and and you know, letting us know what we should be doing. I just want my superpower. That's all I want. Look, bro, I know if, if you if you come back next week and you want to do a pin game with Lil Nas X, I know it worked. That's <laughs>to start with we are all we got this is the first song of 2021 that has sincerely made me want to start bawling to be honest i'm not sure there's a single bar that better encapsulates this project represents what it's all about or that's rocked me to my core the way this is meant to disrupt othering look across the table in the eyes and see your own suffering people are just people that that series of lines from prop just rocked me to my core i don't know about everyone else but i, I was in my feels i was wanting to cry but uh, yeah, so terraforming, this you know, the project Terraform, uh, it's all about transforming an environment that it might be better suited to sustain life. And hearing that proclamation on this project that all these suffering people are just people, it's a complete dismantling of this us versus them mindset. And it's such a powerful note to start off on. And there's just so much hope in Prop saying, when God finally speaks, I bet it'll finally, it'll be through people. We are the culture. Uh, starts off with a bunch of gang vocals, the beat is just a filthy West Coast beat. And he goes through listing people in his neighborhood who started trends within his environment. So it's a shout out to the familiar faces, places, and fashion trends in his world. It's so endearing. It's like riding through his hometown with him. And he's pointing to every street corner. And he's sharing life as he reminisces on how this place has affected him. Such an easy flow. It's really laid back. But the beat stays moving and progressing and changing texture. As you can hear, prop rapping through a huge smile. Like it's like... Man, this is my place. This is it. We are the culture. Um, uh, it just leaves me no doubt that he's got a love for his culture, but he's also calling us to something deeper and something bigger and better. The next song was We Were 10. Wow. This record was such a sonic cinematic experience. The way he painted growing up in two different war zones with two tales of young men unknowingly entering the battlefields of their community and cultures at such a young age reflects the lives of so many black and brown boys worldwide. Like the way he intertwines his experience as a youth growing up in LA in the late 80s transports the listeners into a time when LA gang culture was just sprouting his legs and the NWA had taken the airways by storm then transports us to the conflict in Syria to a place where you have to worry about literally getting bombed on and terrorists scooping up young men to use as pawns in a war. He even highlighted the mistrust of soldiers and the tales of brutality that the people were afflicted by, which parallels the relationship between the black community and the American police system. Clearly, the song has more layers than a Joe and Pill film, and I loved it. Man, yeah, crazy. And he just keeps going from there. We all in. 
uh, continues with the whole neighborhood vibe. Uh, sounds like kids playing, and uh, there's gang vocals again, um, just singing joyfully in the background. And Prop saying the whole team pull up in the foreground. The beat is just banging. It's nasty. I had a meme mug while I was listening to this. Uh, he says, I know different because I was shown different, but the truth is I am no different. Uh, the whole wordplay through Prop's verse is just crazy. I didn't even pick up on everything, man. He's just so – his pin game is just phenomenal here. And then uh, Lecrae comes in on the next verse. I pull up. I put my hood up, and he just blazes fire. The weird thing here, though, like – the EQ on Equa's on, on Lecrae's voice um, was a little different. There's like a lot of wetness on him. I don't I don't know what the what the goal was of that. It sounded like he was in a different room a little bit at sometimes. Um, just different in how Prop sounded. It didn't sound bad. It just sounded different. Um, there and yeah, I just thought the performances though, man, are just just on fire. Like the whole thing was crazy. Um, I really I really enjoyed this one. It was really cool to hear Lecrae just come and spit, spit, spit. Next up, we got We No Entiende, which is amazing to hear from Propaganda because he's from California. You know, everybody speak a little Spanish out in California. So the song starts off uh, with an introduction from the Rodney King riots back in 1992, and you immediately understand why. Prop is challenging systemic racism that has emerged in the United States for really generations at this point. And uh, now he's just reacting with this righteous anger. There's just a lot of content here from references to the Proud Boys extremist group, the law and order buzzword that goes back to President Nixon and George Wallace, and like this poignant refusal to let America hide in her delusions. Prop says something to the effect of like, the true believers in America are exactly that, the people who won't let this country hide in its delusions. Uh, there's also this line, control CV, another Dylan Roof, that adds to the theme of this sort of cycle of white supremacy. Uh, where individuals like Dylan Roof assume that Black people are people who are uh, marching against systemic uh, oppression of Black people are just bound to commit some kind of crazy violence. Um, and all of that is even before Swoop gets in here. And Swoop just eats his verse up. Swoop just kills it. Um, he got he has lines like, got peace in a pandemic, beat feeling anthemic. And uh, if you aren't able to see who's able, it's because that red hat, it ain't where can go but absolutely nothing hits quite as hard as Christ died in the blackest way possible with his hands up and his mama there watching him. Those are only three lines in what is the most insane swoop verse I've ever heard personally. Uh, and so we know at the end that has to be one of the most important songs released in our space so far this year. But the next song was We Need You. And this is probably one of my favorite songs on the project. And this is really dope and powerful. Um, going over the last 14 months with the fine tooth comb, Prop wrote from a very empathetic viewpoint for those who may have been struggling with thoughts of taking their lives because of all they suffered through. From losing jobs, to losing family members, to losing friends over political lines in the sand, all these things have become weights around the necks of so many who suffer in silence, pondering if they have anything left in the world to stay around for. And v Rose's voice just comes through like an outstretched hand reaching through the speakers to grab hold of the hearts of those who stand in six feet from the edge, encouraging them to see their value in this world as irreplaceable. This record felt more like a conversation at a bus stop a la Forrest Gump, uh, more than a, 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 a song, you know, at the listener. And I, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, it's truly remarkable and help, heartfelt. And I feel like um, that this one be one you're going to go back to a lot. And the final track is... We let the credits roll. So let the credits roll is exactly that. It feels like the end of a movie or a documentary. It kind of has that victorious sound as if you finish something, but at the same time, it matches the somewhat somberness of the subject material. Interestingly enough, Prop says, this song is about forgiveness. And then he kind of vaguely wraps through a scenario or some things that he talks about. So at the end, he also lists off names. So are those names thank yous, like the credits would suggest, or are they people he wants forgiveness from, or are they people he needs to forgive? I don't know, but we'll, we'll ask him and, and, you know, I can't wait to see what he says. And that'll wrap up the pen portion of pen game 101. Now let's take it to propaganda for some games. Yo, so what up? You just watched the pen portion of Pen Game 101. Now in front of us is Propaganda. You heard us talk about his project, and now we're going to play some games with the man himself. Okay. Just dropped his record. 
terraform the people. Yes, and just in case y'all didn't catch this part of the recording, y'all playing with me, but don't play with me. You understand what I'm saying? This might be a game, but I ain't a game. You understand what I'm talking about? I need the <laughs> rap Zillaites to understand this. <laughs> mm. I don't really want to play. Well, there no we go. Games. That's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah, we're scared to play games now. That, uh, you that's the be. only intro. You better be. <laughs> He's trying to make this the quickest interview ever. He's like, ah, I'm yeah, out. Get to your point. No, I'm Prof said, ain't, ain't no playing GA, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> All right, cut. Cut, let him let him have it with the first game. Let's go. Let's go. All right, well, prop, you know what I mean? Since, since your pen is propped up, you know what I mean? Like, like the okay. book under the table leg. Got to keep yeah. that gym for rocking. You know what I mean? That's how your pen is. Let's we got go. to to the test. Welcome to the gauntlet. You know what I mean? We about to put you into the... Build the bar, you know what I'm saying? So what's gonna Build happen? Like, okay. Yes, that's right, sir, you know what I mean? It's like Legos for the lyricists, you know what I mean? So what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna give you a word. Okay. And you know that old school, bro, I'm, I'm gonna throw you the word and you got to build, build from it, you know what I'm saying? We gonna, and we gonna keep going till we keep going. Okay, so what do you mean by build? Am I freestyling or are yes, you like sir. slowly you're, writing the song? You're still, no, you're not, you're not it's writing. It's a freestyle, sir, your okay. style is free. Okay. Give us t- you That's can give us two opinion. lines, or if you feel so compelled that you caught it, just write. You, you okay. go until until you don't. I'm gonna give y'all. There's, there's, there's no okay. writing. It's off the dome, no. like a wig in the wind, sir. Now I don't know how many people have done this, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all a fair warning. I come from the battle rap scene. Oh, I know. So, okay, so <clears throat> I can't I can't promise these freestyles will be family friendly. Which is why I rarely freestyle on on camera. We so, can, we uh, could edit. So go <laughs> ahead and edit, edit this. And I mean, I don't know what y'all already think of me, but I might be proving everybody yeah. right. So let's go. Hey, charge it to the game. Charge it to you the understand game. What I'm saying? It's off the head. Forgive me. Hey, man. <laughs> yes. Let's go. Right, let's yo. go. So the first right. word, Chemex. Chemex. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Chemex like a brew method. A true tested. I rock the mic, grinding like a poor Lex, more or less. Rock the track, rip the frack, make it wake him up. I wake him up because my grind kids your coffee cup. I pick a low. Okay, what? Pick a low. Pick a low. Pick a low. I spit it low. I spit a flow. I rip a show. I kick a hoe. No, I don't. I don't call with the hoes because that's not cool. I got a cool flow. I kill that show. Come on. Scribble jam, scribble jam. Okay, 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 okay. I remember the scribble jam. I remember wiping out rappers that was faking in Kansas spam. I remember standing outside, rocking rhymes, flipping tracks while the DJs would cut back and forth. I rock the mic when I tell them to come forth, to come back. I'm still a tunnel rat. I better stop that. Let me, let me spit the next word to rap. I'm a monopia. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm a monopia. I'm a rock a fiat. I'm a drop the mic. I'm a stop and be out. I'm an inner city griot. I'm from LA though. You know the flow when you know how to mic say go, say ho. So I'm about to win a bay go. Give y'all a sound like pow and boom. That's the name of that word. I came to lower the room on the Zoom. Come on. Mm, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat or street fighters to herb lighters. Dreads, Mecca the Myers. I be putting pressure like briars when I. Pull that part out with fatalities. I rock mm-hmm. the mic like Socrates. No five hypotheses, the hypothesis. I rock the mic off the top of this. Give me something harder. Animal style. Animal style. The most West Coast word you've spit in a while. That's an in and out. I slap box when I spit it out. I don't want none. I be yelling F5 guys. Y'all ain't got this. <laughs> 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Ah, uh, nah, nah, bro, nah. That's good, bro. Yo, you the you the random gauntlet, bro. You know what I'm saying finish line. Ding, 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 ding. Nah, give him that last one. Nah. Okay. Oh, finish line. Oh, wait, oh, my headphones. Oh, the, oh, the last. Okay, but listen, uh, yeah, I'm the last one. Oh, one, but yeah, me, but so we, so we gonna go ahead. Okay. Tunnel rats. Tunnel rats was the last one. Okay. Rats. Oh, the last word is tunnel rats. It was yeah, tunnel rats. Tunnel rats. All right, all right, all right, all right. We used to always rhyme tunnel rats with funnel facts. The homie Dax used to say that was really whack. You had to be a little more creative when you're innovative. If your pen game was strong and you was a Cali native, but a tunnel rat under the ground, I'll put him a smack a cat, smack a cat. You never see me with a fitted cap. 
Oh, because I've always had dreads when I was in your lap. Mm. In your lap. Stupid in your lap. You see what I mean? It's stuff. <laughs> right. Well, what happened when a tunnel rat meets a thundercat? Are they coming back? Uh huh. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tunnel rat meet thundercats coming to the soon to the theaters. They ain't I no like that. Tunnel yeah, rat meet guys. thundercats. Okay, that's right, bro. Hey, if y'all doing mixtape, just let me hear what I'm saying. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the tunnel rats thundercat mixtape. Yes, yes. The thunder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, the, oh, like a propaganda and uh, and your boy with the two rack. That's it, bro. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, prop, yes. prop. That was that was awesome, man. We. Three episodes in a row, we have had elite freestyling really? um, artists on here. We had AI the Anomaly, okay, and we had Angie Rose, yes, and then we dope off the head, and then yeah, and then yourself, so okay, and uh, okay, you you three are like all fighting for that top spot, and y- y'all killed everybody else. We- and in my mind, Prop was the best because he likes In and Out over Five Guys. So there it is. Ah, there we go. Well, what a burger is the rule of the mall. So no, no, no. So here's the no. thing, Texas. Uh, you don't even got to tell me you from Texas. You just told oh, me. Oh right nah, now. son. Queens all day, my guy. You know what I'm saying that's how I know. I don't, I don't got a joint in the hole. I don't got a horse in the race. At first, <laughs> I thought New York when you first approached me. Then you said, then you said you drank the Texas Kool Aid by saying what a burger. And here's. I have an argument about this. Here's my theory. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's hear it. Let's hear I don't, it. as a Californian, I want to bring up fat burgers in this. In oh, yeah, this, in this fat discussion. burgers is wow. wild. Fat, but here's the fat problem. burgers, though, you know what I mean? Exactly. But here's the problem. I understand that I have West Coast goggles with fat burgers. It's not better. I just love it. Right. So I, I am aware. I'm self-aware. Just like you talk to Texans about Dr. Pepper. It's not objectively better, it's just Texas. Why don't you just understand that about yourself? You just love it because it's Texas. You would, let me tell you what y'all love about Whataburger. That it's open at 2 a.m. after the Friday night football game, right? And you can get them fries cause you hungry and you high. I understand, <laughs> just, that's just the truth. And what I'm saying is just be self-aware. This burger is not good. You just love Texas. It's right, fine. Yeah. That's the way I, I feel call, about fat burgers. Cut out fries, but them fries taste like car- Everybody bring, cut out. You know what they taste like? You know, you know, they know they man, like? them little they knock off McDonald's Big Mac sauce, bro. I don't come let me, with that. I, first like, first I'm of all, in Texas. Only went to hey, hey, three let the, let let the, the guest speak. speak. Yeah. I'm no, I like this. I like this. He's so New York. Yeah, I bro. That's how we got me. So we got here. It's East Coast, West Coast beef from Rap Zilla. First of all. And his shirt say nah, bro, which already make me know. I can't even say my point. But here's the thing. First of all, this man lives in Charlotte right now. Now. Okay, so oh, man, let me stop my car, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this man lives in Charlotte. I'm actually in New York City. I'm you in, in Staten North Island. Cack right now, bro. So anyway, uh, so first of all, about in in and out fries, you know what they taste like? Potatoes. It's because none of these other places taste like potatoes. You taste in sure. wax and grease, and you think that's a fry. The problem with In-N-Out is it's an actual potato. It's just like if you ever had Chinese food until you go to China. And then you like, dang, Chinese food is nasty. I don't like this. I'm like, that's how it's supposed to taste. You've <laughs> never had Chinese food. You ever been to, uh, you ever been to a, 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 a sushi restaurant? You know that wasabi? It's not wasabi. It's horseradish. Oh, right? 100%. It's horseradish because wasabi don't come to America. I bet right. you've never yep. tasted wasabi. So that's right. my argument about fries. Boom. You've never had one. So when you taste one from in and out you like, this tastes terrible. When I was a kid, I used to go get ice cream at Thrifty. It was 25 cents. It was ice water with color on it. The first time somebody took me to like a 31 flavors or like a salt and straw, I was like, what is this? This is nasty. You know what it is? Ice cream. It's because you never had none. So that's my argument. Yo, but so I live I live in Las Vegas. I live in Las Vegas. Okay. I got a fat burger and in and out down the road. I still go to yes. in and out first. Uh, of course, yeah. And I live in Staten Island, so I just go get pizza, <laughs> and I make and I make my own burgers. I appreciate you letting me build this argument because you didn't have to. Because we're talking about nothing right now. That's fine. This this is the content that I want to see. Okay. Um. Hopefully, other people want to see that. Um. You know, you're not going to get this anywhere else. It's, it's human. It's human. Yeah. Unless you uh, unless you tour with me, me and me and Joseph Solomon had this argument so many times about what a burger. All right, so this is uh this is the guy, Eli that I told you about who's not here. This is his part. Okay. Okay. He does the trivia game. 
So he put together Ooh. a bunch of okay. questions about things that you should or may know about. Okay. So this is fun. Your first question. We all know propagandas born and raised in LA. We all know this man loves his coffee. And we all know that he went on a little trip to Israel with Lecrae, Derek Minor, and a bunch of other guys in our space. So I had to ask him a few questions about all three of those things. Biggest one's going to be coffee because the dude has like a whole bunch of coffee on his website. So question one, where do coffee beans come from? Uh, it's called the fertile region. It's along the band of the equator between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. So it only grows around the equator. I don't think he asked the question right. So I, I know, man, came what, deep, bro. What, I didn't expect. Yeah, Where's yeah. What I think what he's looking for is like what I guess like what are they actually maybe oh, like where do the beans so come plant. from on the it's plant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a tree. It's like it looks like a little nut, and the coffee bean that we roast is just the seed of that nut. Yeah. Is yeah, he, yeah okay. somewhat. He he says he's got the pits are a cherry like berry. We only call them beans because they look like beans or yeah. look like legumes. I'm going to accept your answer because he's not here. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I'm what right. Are, what, <laughs> and you are right. And I'm right. Question two What are the two main types of coffee? Robustica and Arabica. Yes. Question three. Generally speaking, what produces more caffeine, lighter or darker roasts? Uh, lighter. Correct. As of 2018, what city has the most coffee shops per capita? Oh, that's a good question. Man. Wow, that's new. Ah, man, I don't know. I'm going to guess. I have ideas, but that I don't know. Like, I'm like, I mean, Seattle, Colorado, Portland. I mean, Seattle, Denver, Portland, Austin, um, New York because of density. Man, I don't know. You it's, got me there. It's New York City. New York City, New York okay, because of density. Yeah. Yeah. Number five, what two states grow coffee commercially? Bonus points if you can figure out what U.S. territory does it, but it is not technically a state. The thing is, in the coffee industry, we refuse to acknowledge it. So I'm not even gonna mention it because they don't. <laughs> you don't even get to. We don't even acknowledge it. Okay. Well, this that's not his. I don't. That's that's not his answer. This is me saying I don't know the answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so he's got California and Hawaii, and if yeah. we're talking oh, about Hawaii for sure, I forgot Hawaii does. Hawaii absolutely grows coffee, but we don't acknowledge the California grown beans. Yeah, and and if we're talking about U.S. properties, Puerto Rico also also grows. Well, Puerto Rico, uh, yeah, coffee. and Puerto Rico's right inside that region. Mm -hmm. So okay. you could say that, yeah. Question six In what year did Los Angeles come under the control of the United States? Uh, 1853. Oh, close. 56? 56? No, down. You, you went up, go down. 50? It's not 49, because that's when we got here. It's 1851. 1848, he has. Okay, that's incorrect, but cool. <laughs> I used to teach California history, so that's why I was like, nah, I don't count. Uh, because it was, still it was still contested then. There were still squatters. There were still all these things. You could write a document and say, just like somebody walking to your house and be like, this is my house now. It ain't your house until we agree, agree it is. So, yes, according to America, 1948. But... Mexico didn't necessarily agree to that. So anyway, go on. Everyone watching, that, that history lesson was for Eli, not me. Number seven. What did the famous Hollywood sign read before 1949? Hollywood Land. Yes, sir. Last LA question. In what years did LA host the Summer Olympic Games? 1984. And there's another one. Before. Oh, that was uh the was it? nah, not the sixties. Nah, I don't know. Thirty two, nineteen thirty two. Thirty two, got me there. I, I mean, he know. could he could be wrong. You you did teach us something. Now we're going into the Israel portion. I went to Israel myself, so I had to ask a few things, just some real basic stuff. Number nine. What is the currency as of now in Israel? The denarii. He has the new Israeli shekel. Oh, the shekel, yeah. A denarii is a, uh, 
Yeah, it's shekel. I just what? left there. I just I was in Israel. <laughs> You're right, it's a shekel. But they were denarii forever. Anyway, go on. And finally, number 10, what are the two tombs in Israel guides show as that of Jesus? I've been to both. What's the, there's one in, I don't know the names of them. There's one in, uh, I literally have a picture in front of it. There's one in, um, in East Jerusalem in, in Palestine. And then there's one in West Jerusalem, Jerusalem proper. I don't, I don't know the names of them. Right. So he's got the garden tomb mm -hmm. and the church of the Holy Sepulcher. Sep Sepulcher. Sep Sep Sepulcher. Okay. Oh yeah. That's at the, that's on the temple mound. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so you, you did, you did pretty well. Mm -hmm. You know, your stuff. That's I what he was, to. that's what he was hoping. And you may know more stuff than his research indicated. Yeah, so. you know more <laughs> we can roast yeah. Eli because he's not here. Yeah, prop guy. Yeah, the right. California thing, a California thing gets to me because of course, because it's like this is exactly, I mean, this is the problem with like colonial manifest destiny capitalism, right? It's like it's that just because you say it's yours, you know what I'm saying, and you got some piece of paper in front of you that says it's yours, that don't mean it's yours. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, but if we run around and saying, oh yeah, it was ours since 1848, it's like, nigga, no, it wasn't. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we are not done yet, you know? Anyway, that's a whole bigger problem. All right, so the next game is the run it back game and Luke, run it back. explain the game. All right, yeah. Do it. All right, so I'm probably the nerdiest of all of us and I like, I'm an old head hip hop, been listening obviously to you up for like years, 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 years. And so mm -hmm. this is the part where I dig in the crates and I find some of your old songs. Uh -oh. a little bit, and I'm going to start off on a rhyme and see if you can finish it. And I'm not going to Are they my you. lyrics? Yep. Okay. Oh no. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to be I'm going to do terrible at this. All right, let's go. <laughs> or okay, so then uh if you don't know what it is, if you can at least give me a name the name of the song or like the okay. album it's on, then I'll try. Then that's, All that's right. partial. That's partial. There we go. Partial right. points. Okay. All right, here's here's the first one. The return of the mic burner, life of page turner. Story told in old school rhetoric. Young don't rhyme with fellas who get jealous of your life's assignment. There your mind went. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Wait, no, that's it? not right. What right? It's you got some of the mic it. burner. My life of page turner. Story told in old no, this. rhetoric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh that's the song with with solo with poems. <clears throat> we yep. are two of a kind, born to rhyme. We spit as solo, so, 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 Yeah, so, we so, are. So, yep. We are. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. You got it. You got it. Dang. All right. From your first solo album, yeah. Yeah. All right, dope. Okay. Here's another one. This this one might be a little harder. Or at least for me. Like I I thought I was I was I was geeking about this. So anyway. All right, here's the next one. A pavement effacement, be patient, I lace it. Pavement, the sky based basement, efficient. time don't waste it. Oh my god, that's pretty dope. Face it, sky based but dang. Pavement, defacement, face it. A sky-based basement, chase it. Is that the one with KRS? No. It was a whole bunch of people, though. Okay, so base basement, was that? Weak replacement, move, here comes my crew. Nope. Operation defacement, face it, perfect word placement. No. Was that a uh, Foot Soldiers? Yes, yes. What song was that? <laughs> the Anthem. It was uh, it was on like uh, I got some random download like back yeah, in the day of all these the unreleased anthem. tracks. Was about that time everybody throw your hands in the sky, foot soldiers. Yep, what yep, was it? That it. one? Oh yep. dang! <laughs> sky based basement. Dang! Yeah, I don't remember that rap. Okay. Yeah, that had NQ and okay, yeah. All right, this one might this last one might be a little easier, but I thought it was really okay. dope, so I, I wanted to hear you rap it. Okay. Let's play the quiet game. You and I are not the same. Yeah, tapping in with not in to try to top the Akatane. The pocket's insane. With the topics, in, the pocket's insane, but the tockets remain, but the rockets remain on top of the brain, something like that. I slide, I slide through, through with the flyers, the, the haikus. <laughs> High five the sound crew just to defy you. My two cents, y'all rhyme about the senseless. Sitting, spinning all your sentences on keeping up a census. Hell knows your whole soul held on by Velcro. Y'all ain't listen to Mad Villain and it shows. Change up the vocal tone. 
in honor of his going home. Crumb light the fire up one time for the Chrome Dome. Yeah, yeah there that we was a jump for Crumb. Yeah, yeah. See, you did better than you thought. Okay. You yeah, there's, but you got me on that sky base basement, dog. <laughs> that beat was dope, man. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, you know it. Crazy. It's it's funny. This is where artists usually trip up the most on their own on their own lyrics. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so hard. You just yeah. write so many, like right. you know, and and some stuff is throwaway. Some stuff is like a feature for somebody else. Some stuff is like you wrote them in the moment. It was like it was a vibe at the moment. Yeah. You didn't practice it. You went in there and just did it. You know, and you never you never performed the song. You know what I mean? So it's like that's usually like that's what it is for me. Like if I never perform it, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, man, that was that was Good dope. Though. You killed it. So that was, that really was the games portion. So Super dope. Super dope. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Okay. That's it. Are you Woo. are you ready to go into the 101 where basically you take us to school? We're gonna ask you questions and you teach us something. You already okay. taught us something, so you've been doing this the whole time. Okay. You've been you've been presenting arguments and and, and was... thesis on on burgers. Yeah, keep you presenting my case. Yes. Yes, yes. So uh <laughs> Luke, you are dropping the first question. Okay, Prop, you said that uh, this EP is part one of four. Yes. So what is the goal of releasing in such a way, and will each part involve a different theme? Yes, so each part does involve a different theme. Um this and they're all built. I think I've said them before. They're it's the sky, the soil, the people, and the possibility. So this is the people, the one that we've heard already. Um, they all have different. It's four different producers for each EP. Um, and there's the like strategy part of it of like. I just I'm trying to stay in your algorithm by yeah. like you know, all of your release radars and like Discover Weeklies, you know, I'm not gonna give you 28 songs cause then that's it, you know? Right. Um, right. But, uh, and who's gonna listen to 28 songs, you know? So um, so there's the strategy of spreading it out uh, along, you know, for marketing purposes, but ultimately it's like, cause it's it's going along with a book, you know, that that's coming out in, in June, uh, that's also called Terraform. So it's more about like, walking through the entire picture of this like concept that I'm trying to like unpack. So the next one is actually called the sky, um, which will, uh, that's probably all I could tell you now, but like, it's a whole different theme as like the people, which is specifically about building culture, like how humans interact, you know? Cool. So you can't yeah. tell us who the producers are? Uh, not yet. Um, right. but they're all different each time. Like there's a whole rollout and stuff like that, but they're, they're, they are people that for, for the most part were like, just because of the way that we like, we had built humble beast. Like there was a very, um, purposeful reason for protecting the sound and making sure that like the, 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 because that was part of the branding too, was the sound. So this, the production team, there was a, there was a very only a handful of, of people that we were working with because we were trying to protect the sound. Um, but now that like, I, you know, I've moved to a different position, like these are artists that producers I've wanted to work with forever. You know what I'm saying? So now That's like dope. I'm able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Would it be safe to say that if this first part has a book that there will be other books for the other parts? No, the the all four are oh, part of- they're the encompassing. Book. Yeah, encompassing they're all the encompassing. The okay. Book, yeah. We are all we got and we need you are the two tracks that have literal calls to the individual for their participation in the act of creating a better world. You might say terraforming it. So that all our Pen Game 101 viewers can find some inspiration themselves. Can you share some names, some movements, some organizations, maybe just some books or anything that at all, anything at all rather, that are inspiring you amid the pandemic to take an active role in bettering your community? So there's the really heady book uh, that I read um, it's called The Sacred Canopy, um, which is really the idea from where most of the book came from and specifically the people. It's just the idea of like, from a sociological perspective, how culture is made. It's this idea that like we make culture and then culture makes us, you know? Um, and, uh, it, but it's again, it's very heady. It's, it's much more academic in trying to understand the way that 
kind of culture function. So that's one. And the way that like, why I say it's like real heady and academic is because it, you, it's up to you to draw your own conclusions, but they're essentially saying everything that's normal now at some point was made up. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, our, that's what I, and um, so that's uh, borders, nation borders. Like, I mean, there, there's no force field at the 47th parallel that separates America from Canada, like we made it up, you know what I mean? So like, so, so when you understand even the concept of a nation, like we didn't, that's, this is post-World War II. Our understanding of a nation is because of World War II, like we made it up, it wasn't always like this, you know? Um, so I think that, um, that it's almost like the book is kind of laying that out for you to be like, well, dang, if we made this up and it's not serving us well, then maybe we can, maybe let's make something else up, you know? Um, so yeah, so, so that's, that's one, uh, I probably say too, like in the, in the, in the midst of that too, and on that concept is, uh, this book by this, this scientist named Lulu Miller. She wrote this book, Why Fish Don't Exist. Um, listen to me, Why Fish Don't Exist. And it's, it's basically based on this premise that like, if you, you take a salmon, a cow and a lungfish, and you put them next to each other and you say, which one of these two animals are more closely related to each other from a DNA perspective? Well, duh, the salmon and the lungfish. Well, you'd be wrong. It's actually the lungfish and the cow are actually closely related when you get to the taxonomy level. Uh, in the parts that are in there. As a matter of fact, when you go through every fish in the ocean, what you realize is none of them are what we think of as fish. There's shellfish, there's crustaceans, you know, some of them are mammals, you know, whales have lungs, like they don't even have gills, like they're not, you know what I'm saying? So like, so what she's arguing is like, only thing they have in common is their location. It's like pointing at a mountain and saying all the animals on that mountain are the same species. And it's like, well, that's ridiculous. They just live in the same place. They're not the same, right? So there's even a push in like science to stop calling fish fish because there's nothing, nothing, none of it is fish. Like none of them are fish. They're all something else, you know what I'm saying? Which freaks me out, right? But again, it's this idea of like questioning our norms. You know what I'm saying? Questioning how we've categorized ourselves in each other and being willing to understand that like all who who stands to benefit from these categories, right? And and in related to who we call them fish because we eat them. You know what I'm saying? So it serves us. It serves we are the ones in power in this situation. So calling them fish, it only helps us. That's not what they are. But in relation to humans, functionally. Yeah, they're fish, because I don't know what else to call them. You know what I'm saying? So I say, well, well, that's, I mean, ultimately, I mean, you could be mad at me, but that's critical race theory. It's intersectionality. It's just interspecies. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm not actually, I'm not actually black in the sense that the DNA says it. I'm black in relation to the nation state. Like that's what the nation state called me, but it's a reality, it's a lived reality because the nation treats me like this because of this category they made up. So I should understand it, right? That's all I'm trying to say, you know what I mean? So Why Fish Don't Exist, I think is a great book somebody could like listen to, which I know seems a little more indirect, but like, I'm not really, at this stage in my life, I feel like I'm not gonna suggest a book about, you know, racism or justice or political power because in the in the year of our lord 2021 if you still don't think racism is a thing i just don't know what the hell to tell you so i think we need to we need to have a different conversation so rather than racism let's talk about fish and and you can figure it out from there yeah so kind of following up i still just want to touch on like we need you mm -hmm. you tackled the issue of dealing with suicidal thoughts depression and other mental health issues yeah have suffered through, through the traumatic experience of these past 14 months in a way that reaffirms value and self-worth of all that listen. Uh, what were the driving factors behind tackling this subject matter? And were there any personal motivators behind the making of the record? I mean, it's exactly what you think, man. It's like, 
this was happening to all of us, man. And like, you know, we're just in a time that like, everything's a culture war, right? Like no matter what we're talking about, somehow or another becomes a culture war. And I'm like, but this thing is happening to us all right now, you know? Um, so how do I get above that conversation? You feel me? Because to me, it's like every sort of, you know, culture war conversation, it stops when like, I feel like it's a full stop if we're dying, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if it's a life or death situation here, people out here so lonely, so scared, so frustrated, killing themselves. I'm like, okay, then like, okay, guys, can we just, let's, let's like come up for air for a second here. Like this is happening to us all, you know? So I think a big motivation was that was like, how do I, how do I tell you that, you know, even if you've written me off because of my stances, like I'm, I'm living the same reality you are, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and this is affecting us all. And like, yeah, man, I just, you know, I don't, I don't want you to kill yourself, dude. Like, you know, that's it sucks, dude. You know, and I'm just looking at my own frustration of like, especially the line about like your, your screen time, you know, just being like up to infinity. I was like, dog, what? <clears throat> you say 16 hours on the phone today? Like what just happened, bro? Like, you know, um, even just like, had like my coffee into, I already drink a lot of coffee, but like the coffee intake shot up. I realized I wasn't drinking no water because after our iced coffee about 2 p.m. by four, I was making a cocktail, you know, cracking a beer. And I'm like, when you gonna drink water, bro? You know what I'm saying? And like, just yes. real life, right? And I'm just realizing like, think you're like, damn, you're coping, bro. Like, you know, when I was on tour, it's like, yeah, you know, you rock a good show. It's three in the morning. You know, we're all packed up. We're on the road. You know, the guys are like celebrating. It's celebratory. It's like, Hey, you know, pour this, pour this, you know, I'm saving my voice. Cause a lot of times like, like a good, a good whiskey, like kind of helps your voice. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm just doing this, but I'm on the road. You know what I mean? And you're, and it's like, you know, I mean, if you ever seen me perform, it's like an hour and a half of cardio, like, you know, so I'm working all this stuff out. Not true. When you are sitting at home, you know, and you find yourself, it's 10 30 at night. I didn't I didn't bathe the kids, you know, or the little one, my older one, she too old to get bathed, you know. So she, she doing her own thing, you know what I'm saying? But like I done put the kids through the, through their bath, everybody been fed, house clean. My wife, uh, you know, reading, you know, reading, you know, doing what she's doing. I'm just sitting on the couch, slumped, and you like, fool, did I just did I have four cocktails just now? Like, you know, you just don't realize like you at home, like, what did you just do, bro? You know, and you just start realizing like, damn, this stuff is creeping up on me. You know what I mean? Like, let me fall back and be like, dog, like, okay. So there was the reality of like, I'm, I am falling into this like rut, this like, you know, sort of routine that's honestly unhealthy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, and I know this can only end in depression, you know? So I just wanted to like, for myself and for everybody around me, like, listen, I feel you. I'm one of you. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we, we need each other. Like, we are all we got. We need each other. You know. So yeah, that was the that was the thought. Most songs like this are to the listener, and it's not. It's or oh, it's excuse me. It's about the listener and not yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Sound like you know what I'm saying? Like you're chilling on the couch. Yeah. Talking to the listener through. Mm -hmm. Uh, through the words, really, you know what I'm saying, like sharing the heart and really conveying the message of, you know, like, hey, bro, like, we need you. Like, you're yeah. so important. I know it looked crazy right now, but yeah. man, I'm, I'm, it's crazy to me too, bro. You know what I mean? But we need you. That's the hope, man. Peace, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I just don't, yeah, I don't, and this is just a rule of thumb for me, you know, I don't try to make prescriptive music or art, like, because oftentimes I don't know the answer. I don't, I don't know the solution, you know what I mean? And I don't wanna act like I do. It's not that simple, you know what I mean? And I don't wanna present you no platitude, especially in the Christian space. Like I don't wanna present you some sort of platitude about, you know, your faith and this magic pill of you like, you know, we'll just trust the Lord. It's like kick rocks, dog. Like what makes you think this person ain't trusting the Lord? You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just like, that's not, it puts, it's putting this onus on this person to, to muster up something that just honestly, like, I just, 
it's damaging. It's damaging to people's faith, to people's like, you know, psychology, and it's damaging to um, our friendship, our relationship, and to like, if, like my pastor would say, like your prophetic voice. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't keep speaking into your life if I'm trying to tell you something that's like psychologically impossible. You feel me? So I'd rather pull back and just say, well, let me tell you what I do know. I do know we need each other. You know what I'm saying? I do know, like I said, I don't want you to die. I know the, I know, I know it hurt because I hurt. I mean, we hurting, you know, but yeah, you're right. I don't have an answer. You know, I mean, like you, you, I mean, you know, my archives, I got a song called I Ain't Got to Answer. You know what I mean? Because it's true. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? We Were Only 10's first verse seems to reflect realities an American audience would be more familiar with. But the second one seems to take the perspective of a child in Syria. Was this a fictionalized account informed by history or was that perspective coming from someone who actually lived through that experience? Um, it's, it's, it's fictionalized, but in a way that, um, so I'm on the board for the uh, for PLC for Preemptive Love Coalition um, out in Syria and Iraq and at any sort of area of like border conflicts, Venezuela, Juarez, like they're everywhere, right? Um, and my man Jeremy Courtney do, lives in Iraq. Um, when you ask him about the process of radicalization and, and me learning really what they're working with, it just in I mean, just listening to his stories and 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 then even people that are on the ground and work there and live there, I'm like, this was too familiar. I, I it just I was like, I know this story, you know, and it was it, and that's why I put them next to each other because I was like, this is exactly how it happens, you know. Somebody pull up on your house, and you know they demand in bodies. You feel me? And what you're gonna do? What that dad is gonna do? What that mom gonna do? What that little boy gonna do is what anybody else would do, which is like not me them you feel me so it's like we don't we got no problem with the caliphate but them down there i hear i hear they talking mess you know what yeah. i'm saying it's not that you hate that neighbor i just love my family right. you know what i'm saying right. so i understand that you feel me like you know i understand i understand that because it was the same thing with the gang affiliation like who you riding with you feel me yeah. all i'm trying to do is walk to school safely you know what i mean like I just want to I just want to catch the bus to Venice Beach so I could go paint on the wall and ride my skateboard like you know what I'm saying but if I have to like but if the homies are like all right here you go let me see that skateboard scribble scribbles you know 65th street whatever you scribble on my skateboard I'm now affiliated with this hood yeah. you know what I'm saying and now I'm embarrassed cuz it's like I'm not going if somebody asks me where I'm from I can't be like nowhere because you saw the back of my skateboard you feel me but at the same time it's like I ain't really I mean, I ain't signed up for this, you know what I'm saying? But I know I just, I just want to stay alive. You feel me? And what, and and if your solution is, at least in the inner city, your solution was is supposed to be the war on crime, you know, war on drugs and the gang units and stuff like that. You telling me the police is supposed to be my protection from this, but I'm like, that's just like the U.S. troops, to where you like, you ain't no help. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all just as dangerous. You know, so so for me, it was like I wanted to like the whole like the whole idea is I wanted to humanize everybody in this situation to be like that Syrian refugee ain't no different than you. You know what I'm saying? They going through the same thing. It's the it's the same. That's why I called it. We were only 10 because I was like, he gets like you. I get it. It's just no one's ever articulated it like that for you to for you to see that like, yo, it's the same. Yeah. You feel me? It's not a monolith. It's like in the same way that like everybody mad at China. I'm like, right. you really think everybody in China agree with their government? Do you agree with your government? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, why you think, we'll make you think that? You don't even agree with your governor. <laughs> you feel me? Like, and the governors, all 50 of them don't agree with each other. We'll make you think everybody in China think like that. We'll make you think everybody in Russia think like that. No, they just like you. Do you know what I'm saying? They don't trust their government. Just like we don't trust our government. We'll make you think. So I wanted to really hammer that in again if we're building culture to be like, look, dude, like they, <laughs> you want to know what Syria thinking? They think it what you thinking. You want to know what they would do in this situation? Same thing you would do in that situation. You want to know what you would do? Exactly what they did. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I just wanted to really hammer that home. And we know Intian Day. Yeah. yeah. What was your reaction when Swoop sent you his verse back? Cause that verse 
was insane. Verse of the year. Uh, and the kind of candidate right there, bro, you know what I'm saying? And to compliment you as well, what you weaved in and out, describing the protest, dealing yeah. with mine, that was yeah. crazy. The Proud Boys, it was incredible. Can you Thank just you. do the song real quick? Yeah, so first of all, my reaction to Swoop was like, I think this is the first time my whole career that like a feature outwrote me. I was like, I can't believe this it's, it's finally happened. Somebody, I'm like, I, and that's why I called him. Cause I'm like, cause when I wrote my verse, I was like, nobody's touching this. I don't know who, I don't know who I could put on this song. Ain't nobody messing with this right now. Like, oh, my pen is on fire. Nobody messing with this. So then we was like, who do you think could keep up? Like, that's actually me and Mosky. That was the question. Who do you think could keep up? And I was like, what about Swoop? He was like, Swoop could actually keep up. And that's all I expected was for somebody to keep up. Did he hear your verse first? Yeah, yeah. I recorded okay. the verse and the chorus and I sent it to him. He sent it back what like within less than a week. And we looked at each other like, all right, it's are y'all serious? Who else can I, we get? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, and I sent it to two other people, and they sent it back like, ah, I don't know, bro. And I was like, okay, that's exactly what I thought. You know what I'm saying? Um so when when Swoop sent it back, yeah, I was like, dog, you, this is outlandish. I don't, I don't even know what to say. But yeah, so I I, I wrote that verse, um, obviously in June during the uprisings, you know, um, of last year, um, just when just stuff just kept getting stacked up, stacked upon, stacked upon, stacked each other. And at the time when I was writing it, because of like some of my other podcasts and like research stuff, like. I already knew about like for years I've known about like 4chan and HN and QAnon and getting red pilled and normies and proud boys and Patriot prayer and all this like right wing sort of movements where I'm like, these fools are gangsters. Like this isn't conservatism. They gangsters. You know what I mean? And um, so I was like, I was already up on game and I felt like uh, the boogaloo and just this idea of like these people that actually want us to go to war. Like that's what they trying to do. So I was already up on game. So when I was writing this, I was like, how do I start bringing this, this like fringe stuff into the public conversation? And in the time between writing this and then it coming out, people started understanding who the Proud Boys was and you know what I'm saying? And just some of this like more extreme right started thing. They started getting on the news a little more, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately like, I was like, I need y'all to like, I like, please somebody ask me, somebody ask me, uh, who the Proud Boys are. Like, that's what I was hoping somebody would ask, you know what I'm saying, when I wrote it. But again, like culture kind of caught up in between the time we wrote it and, and after. But yeah, it was just trying to just really express that like, the idea at first of the song was like, what well, was supposed to be that we don't listen to each other. So it was supposed to be at first a little more, that's why it's called No At The End Day, like we don't understand each other, right? So like, at first, uh, the, I conceptualized it as a little more uplifting and forward thinking. And then Mosky made the beat and I was like, oh no, I got to growl on this, you know? And the beat came with the clip from the LA riots. Like it was already on the thing. So I was like, all right, well, there goes that. I got to write different, you know what I mean? So I was like, so it just pulled that sort of out of me. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, just wanted to say like, unfortunately I was like, even when everything calms down and this comes out, you can still use the pattern of this verse, right? It's about to happen right now, like the Dwayne Wright situation. It's about to happen. The exact same pattern, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, but like, I wanted people to be able to go back to this and be like, this, this is it, this is what it is, you know? The most obvious form of connective tissue running through the entirety of this project is each title of the, each track uh, having we at the start of it. So talk to us about how important it was to create a collective or communal focus on this project. Again, because just this idea of, I'm trying to express this idea of like what culture is. Like, especially in the Christian space, we have this idea that like the culture's our enemy, that it's something outside of us. And I'm really trying to dismantle that in, in the best way that I can, um, because there is no them. Culture's us, you know what I'm saying? It's two humans trying to figure out how to exist. And if you and if we if we would really as Christians take an honest look at ourselves throughout history, 
the church has had the same problem the world has had always because we are just them. The church is made up of humans on the planet. We're no different. We, we lie to ourselves. And I'm saying this, I'm saying this very, I'm saying exactly what I mean. We read the scriptures, we're in the world and not of the world. And we actually thought that meant we were aliens. It's like, no, that's a turn of phrase, guys. It's, you, you, know how, you know how the country's racist? That's why the church is racist, because the church is made up of the country members. It's the, do you understand what I'm trying to say? There is no them. There's no, there's no them, you know? And if I follow the trajectory of scripture, now I'm about to really bake y'all's noodle. If the family of God started off as, metaphorically speaking, just follow me, like we can go into like, if Adam was an actual man, but if you wanna know, Adam's not a name, it's a species. In the, in the scriptures in Hebrew, it's a species, um, but forget it, I digress. But the, but the scriptures go from um, a, a person to a couple, to a family, to a community, to a nation, to a world. So what, if you're following the trajectory of scripture, God's family is continually, that's what I'm saying in the last song or in the, uh, in the uh, we all in, he's like, I can hear the voice of God saying them too. That's a direct theological point is Jesus, Jesus, the narrative of scripture is continually going, nah, homie, them too. Whether it was the, whether it was the woman caught in adultery, they was like, no, 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 her too, right? Salvation is of the Jews. No, 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 them too. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm saying I'm continually using the word we because I'm actually expressing a, 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 a theological position and it's following the trajectory of scripture. There is no them, it's only us. It, and it continues to be us. And that continues to be, it's Peter on the roof. Peter sitting on the roof in Acts chapter eight, getting a vision of, of creepy things coming down on a blanket and God saying, rise and eat. Peter's like, what are you crazy? I don't eat that, it's unclean, right? God going, hold up, excuse me? You, you what? Call nothing I made clean unclean. And if I'm Peter, I'm like, but this was your idea, bro. <laughs> what do you mean? You called it unclean. What are you talking about? This is, this is your law. You understand what I'm saying? The, the, the existential crisis Peter had to, I mean, we, we all like Paul, but you gotta understand, y'all would have called Paul a heretic. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all have kicked Paul out to churches because the law said they were unclean. And then God goes, no, they're not. I thought God didn't contradict himself. I don't know what to tell you, he just did. You understand what I'm saying? It just, I mean, that's what we're, I don't know what to tell you. So for me, I'm going, maybe God's not contradicting yourself. Your theology's too small. Maybe that's it. Maybe you've landed on something and you don't, you're, your hermeneutic, your theology, your worldview doesn't allow for what Peter just experienced. And what I'm saying is, if it happened in scripture, what make you think it's not happening to you now? Where your, what part of your theology that you holding like this with closed fists that the Lord is looking at you and going, hey, wait, 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 wait. Call nothing I made unclean, clean. Or call nothing I made unclean. You know what I'm trying to say. Call nothing I made clean, unclean. So for me, the we, for the, for the Christian listener, that's what I'm pushing at. You know what I'm saying? That, so it's almost like the he who has ears situation. You feel me? Like, that's what I'm, so that's, that's kind of like why I'm carrying this theme because it's just culture. It's just us. Yeah, thanks, man. That's like, yeah. I feel like in so many aspects of Christianity, we try to box God in and like, that's not yeah. what he's about. Yeah, so that's, that's a good perspective. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. So next next question. Um, over the last year, we've witnessed during the shutdowns, during isolation, um, artists in general have had to pivot and think outside of the box when it comes to getting income. Yeah. Um, but yet you seem to have always had a few different avenues that you have set up in order to lean into for resources. Have you yeah. always been this way? And how did you develop a willingness to try your hand at many things? Man, yeah. Diversi diversify your portfolio, yeah. you know, multiple streams of income. It was something that was taught to me very young, you know, right. um, 
And uh, so I've always kind of had that. I think what the what the pandemic did for me was like, um, you have all these these like plates spinning or things on different burners, you know, on the back burner, but they never really got the oxygen they needed because I was so busy touring, so busy doing the other thing that you really don't know if it works, mm-hmm. right? So for me, having being stuck at home made me be like, well, you know what? Let me see if this will work. So I'll give it the attention um, that it would take, you know, and, and I just, and I've always kept a level head on myself. Like I'm not going to beat myself up. You know, I've always said, whether it was like the red couch pod, the hood politics stuff, or even the coffee stuff, I'm like, I'm not going to give it more. I'm not going to stress myself out. I am going to give it the attention and oxygen that I can afford to give it in relation to how much it's giving back to me. Does that make sense? Like, so if it's, I'm like, when, when, when hood politics pays a bill, then I'll give it the information. Then I'll give it the oxygen it needs. Right. right. But right now I'm going to keep it as manageable as possible. You right. feel me? Um, Cause I'm not going to overwork myself. I still, I still have my family, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you know, you just don't put your eggs in one bag. And I'm just so interested in so many different things. Like I, yeah. I, that's just not, that's not my build, you know, but yeah, very young. Very young, multiple streams of income. You're a multifaceted person, so like it just shows up in all these different things you care about and are. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I subscribe to astronomy today. Believe it or not, like I, I read about quasars and such. Anyway, right. no, you're good. <laughs> right, yo, check it out. So you are both a spoken word artist, yes, rapper, blending lines stylistically at any time you will grace a record. Yes. Uh, a Ward and Loso also both spoken war artists in the past who transitioned into battle rap. Yes. They have an advantage over most of their competition due to the creative writing style they sharpen as poets. Mm-hmm. Now, so you used to battle back in the day, viewers, Google propaganda versus blue. If you want to see, yeah, you know I mean, it happened. LA, yeah, you know what I mean, so given that workout, you're going to get this work, yeah, you know I mean, yep. Yep. So two questions. Do you think that being a poet helps to elevate your content as a writer? And would you ever come out of retirement and battle with today's climate? I mean, Cassidy just came out again and battled yeah, like, like two two weeks ago. Yeah, hit, yeah, <laughs> Hitman. Yeah, I mean, Hitman. Um, I ain't even watched that yet. Yeah, don't. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> nah, Cassidy they love, bro. Yeah, they little arguments on, you know, was just like, I was like, kick rocks, man. This is why I don't get <laughs> back into battle rap. I was like, why, you, man, what is this? So stupid. Anyway, um, just spit the bars, bro. Get to the bars. Uh, Facts. Anyway, um, I do. I think I started doing poetry to make myself a better writer. So I absolutely believe that um, you can you can cross train, you know what I'm saying? In the same way that like, you know, the swimmers, you know, sometimes they get out the pool and they run marathons, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, there's definitely like some crossover. That said, it's, they are absolutely two different crafts for two different points, you know, and they have two different goals. And I think you, one should respect that. Um, So yeah, I think that for me, I, like I said, I got into poetry originally to make myself a better writer for raps and battles, you know? Um, Now, so that's my opinion. Uh, would I come out of retirement? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like my, it's to me, I'm, listen, if we going to play ball, if we playing basketball, I'm the, I'm the OG, the old head with the big socks, you know, only shooting three pointers. <laughs> I used to slash, I used to try to like dribble behind my back and dunk on y'all, but I had my days. You could check my highlight reel. I'm not. Now these uh, knees, these knees ain't like they used to uh, be. You feel me? I'm gonna shoot. So for me, it's like these dudes, like I always like to say, like, if we think about Terminator, I'm like, I'm like the T1. I'm like the Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> version. So it's just kind of robotic. I was crazy for my time. But y'all, these, these, these T3s, they liquid. You feel me? Like y'all liquid metal. You got three minutes. You feel me? You about to write a, you about to write a three minute rap. You know, and you get to write it, bro. Y'all had six that's why months I think to research you can kill it, other. though, bro. That's, but that's why, why I'm like, you can kill it, though. That's you why I'm mean? like, I'm not built like that. You feel me? Like, that's a new, that's new. So what I'm saying is like, if it was different, if it was like, like I said, like I come from a different world. We were like, you, you have to rap on beat. 
right? So there was a beat, there was an acapella, you know, it was, you don't know who you battling, you know what I'm saying? It has to be off the head. So if it was personal, it was just because you happen to know this person. But besides that, it was like, no, we're just, we're just sparring, you know? So that's what I, that's what, that's what I could do. And I'm, what I'm saying is like, that'd be me out there looking like Elgin Baylor. You feel me? Like, you know, <laughs> trying to run with LeBron, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, bro, like I'm, I'm a James Worthy. I'm James Worthy. You feel bro, me? We, look, we, we gonna get you and, and, and Dayton to do a two on two, kill somebody. <laughs> uh, both of y'all yeah, out of retirement. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I have, like, a, I mean, like, a little different than Dayton. Like, I, oh, no, I don't think Dayton feels this way. But, like, yeah, I don't I don't have no theological issue with it. I love that, like, because obviously that's where I came from. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I love seeing these young dudes, these all the horsemen dudes. I love seeing that saga. And also, man, dog, I'm like, murder these fools, man. Murk these fools. I love it. <laughs> Serve them. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So, like, I got no, I got no sweat with it. You feel me? But I just know, like. Nah, I'm gonna remain with my OG status. Like I said, you could pull up the YouTubes. I serve my time. It's just different. And those and those YouTubes, that's what I'm saying. We were freestyling. Like that was Facts. off the head. You know okay, what I mean? Okay. So it's different, you know? Yeah. yeah. So this whole project seems cinematic. Obviously, it's like a musical, it's almost like a musical documentary, end capped, of course, with the credits rolling. It ties up the whole project. You even list off names on yes. that last track, almost like end credits. So yes. And, but before all that, you say this song is about forgiveness. So yes. what did you mean by that? And what would this look like as a movie? That's actually, it's crazy. Cause that's what Mosky said. He was like, I, I'm making these tracks as a movie and this is the arc of the movie. So this was, you caught his, that was his vision as a producer. Um, and that's why he sent me that last beat last. And he called, he called it, let the credits roll. So I was like, okay. So I just, I followed the direction. Um, so the song that was about, the song is about forgiveness. It's like ultimately, you know, all these, whether I was, I was using myself as the example of like, of all these like problems across the world, all of the ailments in my own life, I was saying as a metaphor to like my own father, where it's like, I've inherited, you know, a lot of pain from him. I have a lot of practices from him, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I have a lot of hurt and unforgiveness towards him, you know? But the the truth of like, again, I didn't endure what he endured. You know, he did the best he could. Uh, and I and I am him. It's in it's it's going back to the like, there is no them. There's only us. You know what I'm saying? So in me pointing at these people who all passed away, like in that lyric, in those lyrics, those are all real names. You know what I'm saying? Ending with uh, my goddaughter, Amelia, and then uh, DJ Effecto, you know what I'm saying? That's what Ronnie is. So Ronnie's DJ Effecto. Uh, so ending with that is just like the reality of like good, bad, or ugly, it's all us, you know what I'm saying? And so whether it's forgiveness for yourself or forgiveness for the pain that's been caused around you, it doesn't excuse it. It doesn't wash it away because it's still, it's still a reality. That's why I was like, the, that's why I said the line, like the body keeps score, like, which is another great book that y'all should, y'all should read. It's called The Body Keeps Score. Um, and, uh, and um, but just the reality of that, of like, look, it, it all exists inside of me. It's the same idea I've always said, whether it was the crooked record, which again, is the idea that like, I am the crooked one. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you didn't follow that record, that's what I'm saying. The problem's me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just go back to 2017 record. I'm saying the problem's me. And the problem's you. And the problem's us. You 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 understand what I'm saying? So so that was the concept. Whether it was Precious Puritans, the put the, the the poem that put me on the map in the first place. I'm if you listen to it, I'm saying the problem's me. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like that's so it's this has been a theme of my music the whole time, you know. Um, so so I think that uh yeah, it was important that that like there was this attitude of like again, I'm holding things loosing. I'm holding things with the attitude of forgiveness and grace because I know I'm just like this, but this doesn't excuse the problem. There is a problem that needs to be addressed. There's some healing that needs to happen inside of me and inside of each other and inside of our culture. And we have to do it. There's nothing coming for us. It's us. We have to do this, you know? Well, final thoughts is again, we're not against the culture. We are the culture, man. And uh, if you want to see it better, you need to see you better. 
All right, so that was Propaganda. Of course, he dropped his new project, Terraform the People. It is incredible. Give it a listen. Seven songs to blow your mind. He ran through the games pretty effortlessly. In fact, he even said, that's it, <laughs> when we were done. Um, another dope spitter off the dome. Uh, shout out to Eli for his questions and interacting, even though he's not here. Or maybe he is. Maybe, maybe I'm putting a, a, an image of Eli right here. But uh, shout out to Prop. Again, check out that project. Stay tuned for who we have next on Pen Game. Um, I'll, throw, I'll throw out some names. I don't know what order it's going to be, but we have, we have Bumps and we've got Gavi. Whatever order they come, those are the next ones. Um, guys, final, final thoughts? Anything real quick? Man, Prop is awesome. I, I, I really love this interview. So, yeah, I was geeking out. I mean, yeah, it was dope, bro. Only thing, you know, I wish I would have got to ask him, you know, what he uses for his hair. Cause you know, I tried to juice and berries or coming to America. That ain't work. I just made my hair sticky. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm trying to get get my black Rapunzel on, you know what I mean? Just let it know, you know. Awesome album though. Well, definitely. If I would have knew it's gonna be a movie, I would have got some popcorn, bro. And see, it need to the stream need to come with a coupon for some popcorn so you can eat it while you listen to it. That's can we a, just turn it off right now? I'm kidding. Can we? <laughs> and, no, we'll end it off. We're, we're going to kick it to Eli. All right. Thanks, Eli, for the final word. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all next time. This is Pain Game 101. Peace.